announcing the arrival of Prime Minister Narendra Modi of the Republic of India and our distinguished guests. Good morning, and welcome to the inauguration ceremony of the Resilient Rice Field Laboratory. The laboratory that we will be celebrating this morning will be a vital part of Erie's future research on multiple stress-tolerant varieties, rice varieties. When shared with farmers, these varieties will help farming families and communities move closer to food and income security. I would now like to invite Dr. Matthew Morell, Director General of the International Rice Research Institute, to bring welcome remarks. Thank you. Your Excellency, our Prime Minister. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, delegation guests, Erie colleagues. On behalf of the entire community of the International Rice Research Institute, it's with great pleasure and honour that we welcome His Excellency Sri Narendra Modi and the delegation from India to IRI's headquarters, where IRI is hosted by the University of the Philippines and in the town of Los Banos. After some very heavy rain last week, we did not know if we could perform this groundbreaking ceremony for the Resilient Rice Field Laboratory here in the field. But uh, you have brought good skies with you and uh, they have cleared and the flash flooding that occurred here last week has receded so we can complete this ceremony today. So while this site currently looks like a set of rice fields, we will be completely overhauling this site to build in state-of-the-art sophistication in growing rice under controlled flooded and saline conditions. This laboratory will allow us to control not only the conditions under which rice is grown, but also to use some very exciting new methods for measuring the growth and performance of the crop. This can be done here at scale, so we can test hundreds of new varieties for their ability to cope with flooding and salinity and explore which varieties are suited to mechanization and different crop management strategies. Mechanization and improved crop management options are becoming more and more critical as women increasingly shoulder the burden of rice farming. We are conscious that extreme weather events are a particularly important part of persuading farmers uh, to invest in the productivity and quality of their crops. This is not just about improving yields, but it's about providing the technology that gives the farmers uh, to invest, to treat agriculture as a business, and a business where wise investments in technology and effort contribute to increasing their efforts and well-being, setting up a virtuous cycle in which they can reinvest profits in their farms, in their children's education, and in the health of their families. So amid climate change, decreased availability of arable land and water, increasing urbanisation and increasing population, the challenge of how to feed uh, more people with more nutritious food, yet from fewer and fewer resources, is a matter of fundamental concern. Yuri, India has been a model of how to mitigate risks and create economic opportunities in agriculture 
and India supports this commitment with leadership in scientific research for development. Yet we all recognise that there is more to be done. In this great challenge, IRI and Indian institutions are in close partnership and this new field laboratory will play its part in strengthening that bond. As you will see later today, uh, the genetic diversity from India's rice farm fields that is held in trust in our gene bank is improving the future of farming. Almost 15% of our global collection of rice varieties is native to the Indo-Gangetic Plain. Many of our scientists here with us today have in recent years contributed to research that has already reached over 4 million farmers in India. And of course, there is more to do. Our work in research for development, however, has taught us that these innovations are wasted if farmers cannot access them or they do not provide the benefits that lead farmers to adopt them. Through IRI's education program and our deep partnership with the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, we're able to help farmers and their families quickly adopt new practices to improve their farm productivity. For example, in Odisha, IRI and its partners have taught over 200 women farmers how to use new farming technologies, providing them with the knowledge and the tools needed to increase their productivity and income. As I said, our work is far from over. Increasing volatility and weather patterns from climate change, as well as a dwindling and aging farming population means that we must make farming more attractive to young people. To do this, we must take as much risk out of farming as we can. We can, through facilities such as this, build in biological insurance in the form of varieties that withstand stresses and yet meet market expectations. We can improve crop production systems so that farmers optimise their investment knowing the likely returns. We can build crop insurance schemes that harness the power of remote sensing technologies to rapidly and accurately quantify any losses and provide payments to farmers faster. And we can protect the value of the harvested crop through better storage and processing technologies. The resilient rice field laboratory that we're inaugurating today is an important step forward in our growing commitment to support India's rice sector throughout this challenging future. The next step in our commitment will be the inauguration of the IRI South Asia Regional Centre in Varanasi in early 2018. The first of its kind, this IRI South Asia Regional Centre will be a hub for research excellence in the region, as well as a classroom for farmers and scientists. The URI South Asia Regional Centre will pick up the work done here in this re resilient rice field laboratory and take forward the process of adapting that germplasm to the needs of Indian farmers in partnership with the Indian Council of Agricultural Research and state governments. This council will also have this centre will also have a primary focus on adding value to rice by working with both public and private sector breeders. The centre has also been designed as a model of South-South collaboration for South Asia and also Sub-Saharan African nations. The lessons learned in these facilities will be transferable across the global South with the potential to benefit the world's 145 million rice farmers. I would invite the Prime Minister to inaugurate that important facility in his constituency of Varanasi as a part of our ongoing partnership and commitment to India. Today, you will have an opportunity to learn about many of IRI's innovations in your short visit here. IRI is enormously proud of our work with India over the past decades. As India's capacity in science and technology has grown, the nature of our partnership has deepened so that we now enjoy a strong, mutually beneficial partnership that improves the lives of rice farmers across the world. We are humbled 
by the opportunity to work closely with you to transform the lives of people through innovative agricultural research. I believe that this joint mission defines our purpose and guides our every step. Your Excellency, we thank you again for your visit and for the opportunity to work together for the rice farmers of the world. Thank you very much, Dr. Morrell. Erie values the long-standing partnership we have with the government of India, which has brought about breakthroughs in rice research and farming systems in India, as well as in the global community. To mark another milestone in this partnership, I would like to invite the Erie D Director General, Dr. Matthew Morrell, and the Prime Minister, M Narendra Modi, of the Republic of India, to inaugurate the new Rice Resilient Field Laboratory. Uh, with the ceremonial groundbreaking out with the shovels on the side of the stage. I would now like to I would now like you to uh, invite you to the uh, plaque here placed on the stage and to cut the ribbon of the plaque to formally inaugurate our new uh, field laboratory. The plaque which will appear at the field laboratory once it is completed. So this is so, so. Rice, Resilient Rice Field Laboratory, dedicated to doubling farmers' incomes in India for the development of blood tolerant rice varieties. <laughs> Inaugurated on November 13, 2017, by Sri Narendra Modi at the International Rice Research Institute. I understand that the government of India, through Prime Minister Modi, has a gift, of, a gift to present as a symbol of our friendship. Uh, the first record of Indian rice varieties to be held in trust in the gene bank was in May of 1961. This included a total of 20 rice varieties. With this gift today that the Indian government is offering to Erie, India further strengthens its contribution to the Erie gene bank by adding two more rice varieties. Pusa 1612 and Pusa 1638. So as a reciprocal gift, uh, we would like to uh, uh, conduct the full DNA sequence analysis of these varieties and make this available uh, for researchers around the world. Thank you very much, delegates and guests. This ends our ceremony this morning. Uh, I'd, be, I'd very much like to thank you for being with us to celebrate this historic moment and this next phase of our partnership. May we invite Prime Minister Narendra Modi, accompanied by Dr. Morrell, to visit the plant growth facility now. If I could ask my eerie colleagues to please wait while the delegation moves on to the next part of the uh, tour. Thank you very much and good afternoon. <laughs>